The creative process for me has kind of grown through the years as I've learned and as I've had the opportunity by necessity to become a, a songwriter. I started writing, as I said, after I learned a few chords, I started putting together some lyrics and basically what seemed like a poetic way to tell a story. You know, I just wrote exactly what I felt. Through the years, I was writing for uh, different record deals. I, I was signed when I was 16 to Epic Records. Knew nothing about the business, nothing about recording, except by that time I knew that there were people in the industry who heard my voice and encouraged me to go for a career at 16. It wasn't until 18 years later, I was 34, and I had my first hit record. Until that time, I just kept struggling and signing and being courted by different producers, brought to labels, signed with many different labels. I was kind of learning the hard way. One of the things that kept me going was having somebody who was um, credible in the music business saying, if that deal doesn't work out, come call us and write some songs and we'll take you in the studio. I mean, we think you're great. And that wasn't paying the bills, but that made me feel like, okay, that person who I think really knows what they're talking about still believes in me, maybe more than I did at the time. But I kept getting those little cups of water in the desert. That's what it was like. It was like, this will get me another 50 miles or so. At one point, someone uh, suggested that I consider writing for other people. And I said, well, let's see where this goes and started writing songs. I didn't have a sense of genres. Uh, I loved country music. Um, I was a Kenny Rogers fan, but of course I loved Marvin Gaye. In 1983, Laura Brannigan recorded a song of mine that I wrote with Doug James, first song we wrote together. She had had a hit called Gloria. That was the only big hit she had had at the time. And that was the first hit record that I had as a songwriter. After a little while, Columbia Records, I got called into the principal's office, basically. The head of Columbia Records was Al Teller. And he said, um, I know you're writing a lot of great songs and giving them to other people, but I don't want you to do that anymore. I want to make one more album with you. And I left the office with my uh, manager and I said, did he say he wants to make another album? He said, yep. Yeah. And I had already fallen in love with the process of writing all of these other songs that were spilling out and I was writing, collaborating. I loved walking up to the microphone once we were done with the lyrics and breathing life into it. No one should be able to, to deliver the story in a more compelling way than one of the creators or co-creators of the song itself because you lived and breathed every note and every word to the song. So I, I loved that process and I wanted to keep writing pretty much uh, forever. One of the most powerful experiences I've had in writing was writing uh, a song for Coretta Scott King. I became friends with her and the family, and they would send me photographies, pages and pages of photographs telling stories um, about what Martin Luther King Jr., what he lived through, the message that he brought, and ultimately how much he gave. One day, I would receive a package of cassettes. And in those cassettes um, was something I was looking for because I was invited to speak at an event with the King family. And I wanted to know what I was talking about. So I put the cassette in the player and, and I started listening to Reverend King. His voice was mesmerizing and inspiring and uplifting, but I couldn't stop listening to his voice and listen to his message. I think when I look back, most of my songs are relationship oriented. They're about love. They're about losing, finding, embracing love. But I've written moments that express and identify what I'm focused on at that time. And one of the things that happens that you never, I don't think you could ever imagine, is writing, having something trigger a moment that turns into a three minute and 30 second song. Coretta had sent me a book and there was a picture of her in the book standing beside Reverend King. 
and I looked at her face and I saw this story and I wrote a song called The Courage in Your Eyes. And I wrote what I thought would be a message of gratitude and uh, recognition of how much she sacrificed and how strong she had to be to be with Reverend King. That's just, that's one kind of window into what you can express as a songwriter, um, as a human being, and having the gift of uh, creativity uh, to be able to find the words, or put the words together to tell the story. I would encourage young aspiring artists and writers, musicians, to do what they love to do. Just go for it. Sometimes people say, like, these people are like family to me. And you know that that means you're close, if you work together, you spend a lot of time together. But BMI became champions of mine. Francis Preston became a huge hero of mine, huge fighter for songwriters, songwriters' rights, publishers' rights. But someone who would invite me to events and give me a platform to perform for the industry, the bigger I got as an artist, the more success I started having and recognition, the more I felt I could bring to these various events and fundraisers that Francis was committed to. We used to joke about that I would never say no if Francis called to do something. Barbara Kane became a really dear friend and champion, and she was also very close with Francis. Del Bryant became another great friend and ally and champion for my fundraising. BMI has supported my fundraising for women and children at risk, which we've been doing for 25 years. There are a few people that will introduce you to other people that were, are going to be friends and allies down the road, but then there are some people who are, you know, leave a, a very indelible imprint, especially in your becoming years, in the, in the struggling, striving years, where you're, you know that you can always call them for advice or input about the industry or your next moves. BMI is, um, is like family to me. We have a long, fantastic um, relationship and I plan on that continuing.